So good morning once again and today is the second day of our series on heart. Wish you all a very healthy and happy heart. <laughs> okay, so let's start. Now see this is what is in action today. We'll be discussing embryology. Yes, very good morning. Now see, yesterday we talked about anatomy, right? There were so many structures and we said that these structures, they make some meaning when we really understand that how they are, say, developed. So today we'll be unleashing those secrets. Now, the best thing about embryology is that it is always like a story. It's always, always like a story because it's a process, right? And that process is such that it's a continuous process. You need to understand that what is happening and how it is happening and actually you have to do a bit of what's called as the visualization. Now visualization is enhanced when you actually implement more number of senses. So today, not a single figure over here which will be picked up directly from the book or anything. Everything is hand drawn. Everything. Right? So what I insist is, good morning, what I insti insist is, you also parallelly keep on drawing. Trust me, that by the end of today's session, you will be knowing the embryology so well and, and whenever you have to revise it, all you have to do is you have to just draw a few figures and it will be complete. Now, will it be, will we be covering each and every minutest detail of this? No. Because it's like if I present you that much heavy in the platter, right, it becomes difficult to digest. So that's why Say tomorrow's topic is fetal circulation, right? Fetal circulation as such, it has got so much to do with embryology. But that we have kept it for tomorrow. And during that, we'll be discussing some other finer points also. But yes, by the end of today's session, we'll be developing a full complete heart, right? So what you do is, parallelly, as I say, you keep on drawing. Right? There will be very simple, very interesting figures and you can keep on drawing it and that's how the whole process would continue. So first thing first, why it is necessary? Why do we really need a heart? Right. Apart from other emotional reasons, the medical reason is, is something like this that nutrition is so important. So in the first week, that is just before implantation, there is a simple diffusion, right? The process is simple diffusion. It means that there is one environment and here is the tissue. All it takes is the single cell layer membrane and all the nutrients, they enter into this particular cell simple diffusion and this is from uterine gland secretion is enough because we are dealing with week one this is before implantation things have just started right so nothing much to worry about the simple diffusion is enough and when the waste products are to be thrown out no problem they'll be doing diffusion in reverse order so they will go reverse and that's it so it would be diffused out so first week no problem. Second week during implantation, here also there is not much of the trouble. Diffusion can work fine. But there comes the third week. Now in this third week, after implantation, demand increases. Now this much nutrition is not sufficient. So what happens is there is need to have to have an in-house facility. That is our separate system 
which should circulate the blood. So there is necessity of a separate blood vascular system in the third week. So bus whenever it is needed, there is a nature and it starts with the project Labdub. Right? So we'll name this as project Labdub that is floated in the third week. So let's start with the entire system. Now see what happens is when we read from the book straight away it is when it is said that okay it is on the caudal end of say embryonic triembryonic this trilayer embryonic plate at uh, splanchnic splanchno pleuric mesoderm involvement now this this becomes like you are disoriented it it is not making it is making sense but why don't we start with so much basic so much simple it will take just few minutes but we'll know that where exactly are we standing right so let's see some of the basic blood is needed yes blood is needed so then what will what shall we do there are three types of cells ectoderm endoderm and in between is a mesoderm right so it is the mesoderm which is taking this responsibility now these cells they differentiate what is differentiation differentiation means they will change their characteristic as per need and they will lead to generation of other cells so blood is needed so that's why mesodermal cells they will come into picture they'll say okay we'll transform some of our cells into hemangioblast now we talked about blast is not destruction it is production correct it is production blast is production and hemangioma hemangio so that means blood vessels right so blood and vessels they are produced so hemangioblasts they will be coming into picture so we can say these are the common precursor precursor means raw product right these are the common precursor just to start with later on when sophistication is needed fine they'll say okay, okay now these cells won't be sufficient we need to call bone marrow now bone marrow comes from the headquarter right and then it starts generating better quality of the products so this is what really happened this is like we are just beginning so let's start with hemangioblast they are the common precursor that means it is like a raw product later on in bone marrow there will be definitive definitive means specific right there would be specific hemopoietic stem cells so they will be generating different type of cells as per need so done blood part is complete they will say we will ne we'll also need blood vessels fine blood vessels are needed so they say okay, there is there are two groups vasculogenesis genesis means production this is easy vasculo means vessels angio is more specific right you must have heard angiography right so graphy means display to read to see so when the vessels are displayed that is what is called as the angiography here we are talking about vasculo vessels so what's the difference this is again a basic stage same those mesenchymal cells they come and they say okay, okay this time angioblast so we are making vessels so they will make vessels how they are made ves how the vessels are made now this is interesting what happens is so those cells right those those mesenchymal cells they'll differentiate themselves and they'll form a cluster now we'll call them angioblast right and then a cavity develops first a cleft cleft means a gap a gap develops then this gap it starts becoming bigger right and these cells they arrange themselves they arrange themselves in one specific like this they'll arrange themselves and in between in between say 
there are other components which will be forming blood now these there are blood islands right how interesting the name is blood island right these are like blood islands it means that such several structures would be there right so there would be one more structure right i'm drawing a bit fast right so so that way that way one structure similar structure there will be and what this do we saw that cleft appears that's a cleft appears that becomes bigger then there is a reorganization and then finally aggregation aggregation means they start coming near each other right so when they start coming ne near each other so their their cavities they also meet and one two there would be more structures right all of them they meet all of them they meet and that's how our initial blood vessel our early blood vessels they are formed right and the blood starts flowing now <clears throat> this is okay for one but when we want more right we want branches and branches and branches so that is what is called as the sprouting sprouting right say those sprouts right those offshoots so they 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 right emerge right those sprouts which we eat right so here also it is more or less like that what really happens in this say a vessel was there and then there would be another angioplastic tissue right it will be formed and then again in this in this the cleft would be formed and then they will differentiate into endothelium and blood cells right so a new vessel is developed then once again from here new vessel develops new vessel develop so just by the right just by the proliferation of angioplastic tissue so that's how the two processes one vasculogenesis where things start from absolute basic and then from vasculogenesis there would be sprouting of new vessels from existing ones right and that's what is called as the angiogenesis okay so now we are ready for the arrival of happy heart let's see how it starts and how it ends with the complete heart right so here is a complete basics right so here is a couple and one of the bravest strongest finest sperm he fertilized that ovum and just after 24 to 36 hours here is what we see as a two cell stage right just a two cell stage immediately right 36 to 48 hours it is now into three cell stage goes to four cell stage and quickly it keeps on dividing till we reach a stage what's called as the morula right now there are so many morula blastula simple thing morula means it has got 16 cells now these 16 cells we'll call them blastomeres but when we say blastomere there is one speciality which you must not forget because morula has what's called as the zona pellucida what is zona pellucida well it is the outer covering right it is the outer covering that is zona pellucida so when you say always remember in the form of keywords morula means 16 cells and with zona pellucida and this zona pellucida is glycoprotein layer now then when you go into more details so then there is protein zp1 zp2 zp3 that's okay they basically they are all different type of proteins and inside all these 16 cells they are sitting over there just like a simple ball right 72 to 96 hours so just it's four days right four days have passed when that brave sperm that went for that expedition right and it is this ball has formed now from here the changes are extremely interesting from marula it moves on to the next stage what is called as the blastula blastula in blastula there are two stages one is the early stage second is the late stage right 
in early stage still there is zp present that is zona pellucida is still present but those cells right those cells they were in a ball right a full ball they start moving towards one end they start moving towards one end see they are moving towards one end and then there is the formation of blastocoel what is seal seal means nothing but it is cavity so wherever this comes understand that we are talking about a cavity you will come across extra embryonic coelomic cavity right but it is nothing but it is a cavity extra embryonic coelom it's a cavity intra embryonic it's a cavity and blastoderm those cells which are there so as you must have guessed that what would happen in the late stage well nothing much first thing first that zona pellucida degenerates and decomposes gone now there are only those cells right these cells and we'll call these cells as trophoblast trophoblast again blast so they will increase right blastocoel that is blastocyst cavity we have talked about it right and then there is inner cell mass yes so some name is to be given so we give the name inner cell mass which are on one side the side where they are we'll call this embryonic pole and it is for the first time we are getting that what is seedha what is ulta otherwise it was just a ball right? nothing like upside down everything same so but over here now we know that this is the embryonic pole so we give the name so it means that these cells right these cells these trophoblast these trophoblast which are on the side of embryonic pole so we'll call them polar makes sense right because they are on the side of embryonic pole so they are near the embryonic pole so we'll give them we'll give the name polar trophoblast and rest are mural trophoblast remaining they are the mural so we have become bit expert in that and telling that these are the trophoblast which are polar and these are the mural trophoblast right it becomes easy to explain because when you say polar trophoblast immediately you are talking about the embryonic side why embryonic because that's where that inner cell mass is sitting correct because see everything developed from two cells 2 4 8 16 right everything so we need to first define that where should we develop the heart so for that there would be a trilaminar plate and then in that plate we have to decide that where is head end where is tail end and then we have to decide which is anterior which is posterior because right now the things are round there is nothing like anterior posterior head end tail end nothing and then they we say this plate folds and this plate takes turn and then this that everything but but with what reference it is like is in space if you are sitting there is nothing like anterior posterior nothing nothing then right? nothing like upside down because everything is like a space so over here first there is a definition so now we know one and at least okay let's move further so this inner cell mass once again differentiate that's the beauty of the thing everything starts with those simple cells and then those cells they are given the commands that okay you become this you become that and then they start working on it so when they differentiate that is when they change we need to define two things one what's the change and second where it occurs so here is first those inner cell mass that means this was the area of that inner cell mass correct this was the area where those inner cell mass was there right they change by the way in all these cells do understand that there is nucleus but i have not drawn it right because everything was hand drawn so i thought yes you would understand that in every cell there is cell i have not drawn cells uh, means nucleus on in into these cells okay but here it is that that inner mass few cells they become flat cells so these are flat cells see they are flat cells flat 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 they are flat cells now when they are flat cells right so we tell them hypoblast hypoblast right they become 
smaller so hypo is small so they are endoderm they go inside right they are inside so they are endoderm they are endoderm and they are hypo because they are smaller other cells which are on the top they become big right they become big and they are called as the epiblast also known as the ectoderm so we have now ectoderm which are big big and we have endoderm which are flat and here is the trophoblast so simple right things are good okay now there is formation of amniotic cavity primary yolk sac and then comes all those extra embryonic mesoderm this that everything how it occurs see things start from here only here in this area this this what i'm marking over here right over here so there is differentiation of cells over there and there is shift of this entire inner cell mass so it goes down when it goes down there is formation of a cavity and that is amniotic cavity so a cavity is formed right ectoderm and and ectoderm remains as it is they'll say okay, no i am not doing anything i just shifted i was absolutely on the top so i just shifted downwards these endoderm right which was a single layer right those endoderm those endoderms they will say okay, no i also want to make one of my own chamber right my own cavity so they start proliferating and they create they create what's called as the primary yolk sac so it's like just a shift of those cells right ectoderm they shifted from there to there and endoderms they developed and we have got now primary yolk sac now this primary yolk sac it is formed but these endoderms they have not been pushed all the way to the trophoblast there is some space between both of them there is a space between these trophoblast that is these are the trophoblast and the endoderm so this space this space right that space it is outside the embryo right that was the embryo and this is outside the embryo this is outside so that's why it is called as the extra embryonic mesoderm it is extra embryonic mesoderm mesoderm is there right because this is something which is developed from the neither ectoderm nor endoderm this is a mesoderm from which so many things would develop mesoderm is a middle layer so this is extra embryonic mesoderm so that's the space which is over there now see what happens in that space right in that in those mesoderm there is formation of one more cavity right so these are the mesoderms right all those mesoderms those cells and in that there is formation of one more cavity see what happens this is amniotic cavity you know this right there is secondary yolk sac you know that and then this surrounding area was totally filled up with those mesoderm but then there is development of a third cavity so we have got amniotic cavity as one secondary yolk sac two and then this is extra embryonic coelom coelom is cavity right coelom is cavity so there is there is this cavity that cavity develops so then whatever is above it it is nearer to the organ so during our pericardial discussion right we said that pericardium it has got say visceral layer visceral layer and the parietal layer same thing is true even for the lungs so it has got pleura same thing is that for abdomen right so in that which is peritoneum so pericardium was having visceral parietal pleura was having visceral parietal peritoneum has got visceral parietal this means 
विसरल इज नियर द ऑर्गन इज नियर द ऑर्गन सो सेम स्टाइल द नेम विच इज गिवन इट इज प्लैंकनो प्लोरिक दैट इज विसरल इट मीन्स दिस एरिया दिस एरिया राइट इट इज प्लैंकनो प्लोरिक मीजोडम एंड दिस इज आउटसाइड वन विच इज पराइटल राइट दिस इज पराइटल this is called as somatoplurik so you need to remember this splanchnoplurik which is visceral and somatoplurik that is parietal these are nothing but mesoderms cells but now we have got a clear name of both of them we know that where they are fine but now we will draw our focus to this area just that area the two layer disc we are interested in that disc that this is the point where the heart is going to develop right so how actually heart goes over there starts beating develops chambers develops valve right how it happens so here it is that's what we have got this portion this is what we have got just a two layer and if you if you look at it actually it is like a circle it is like a disk right this is like a disk round round disk and in that disk there is no head no tail nothing just a round disk in which there are two layer of cells one is ectoderm second is endoderm and we say that it is name epiblast hypoblast but that's okay it is just a circular disk right in which two layers of cells now these cells they are big specific those hypoblast right or the endoderm they are cuboidal right they are cuboidal so you know cuboidal that means they are having they are cube like and ectoderm they are columnar they are long now something starts interesting they say this disk has got nothing nothing no no head no tail nothing so let's define the head first and then throughout the development this landmark would be considered that okay this is the head end so this is the end where the mouth would develop that opposite end would be the tail end that is where the cloaca would develop and as we'll see that when the digestive system develops this that but they always keep this thing as reference right so first thing first it will say we need to define the head end so for head end some of the cells see this is the beauty of these cells they differentiate they differentiate they make themselves different than others so those cuboidal cells some of the cuboidal cells right as the message comes from the head quarter and they say okay, okay transform yourself so one of the end that would transform itself and they are called as the procordal plate what they do from cuboidal they become columnar and this area is called as the procordal plate and here is what we are watching as a procordal plate it means out of that entire disk few cells which are on the say endodermal side right they they develop and they differentiate and then they lead to what's called as the procordal plate okay till this point right there was no head tail now the head is defined so we say central axis is defined now we know this is head so that's our central axis so we'll say this is the head end this is the tail end and when we are watching let's say if we if we take if we watch on the long axis of this we take a section so in that case also we see that this is the head end and this is the tail end and who is the person defining and he is nothing but procordal plate because he has transformed itself to columnar now starts the next process <coughs> and this is anterior right by the way this is anterior and that is posterior so we can even define it like dorsal and ventral right so this is ventral we can define it like this is ventral and that one is 
dorsal side. So, this gave us that advantage also that who is anterior, who is posterior, which is head end, which is tail end. So, all done. Now, from the tail end, a new process starts. Right? Procordal plate, so it is there, it has formed itself and it's, it has declared that this is the head end. Now, from the posterior surface, right, this is the dorsal side. Do keep imagining dorsal side, the cells once again differentiate. They start changing themselves, right? And this is what is called as the primitive streak. Primitive streak, very primitive streak on the tail end, right? So here is few of the cells, they are on which side? Posterior side, right? So this primitive streak, which is on the posterior side, it means who is getting involved? This is ectoderm which is involved, okay, which is the ectoderm getting involved because this was endoderm, correct, over here, right, that was endoderm and this was ectoderm. So, now primitive streak is, is like these are the cells which are going for that differentiation and they change and when they change, so now your images that on head end, there is procordal plate which is occurring on anterior side and primitive streak which is developing on posterior side. So far, it's all easy, all good. Now starts the real fun. That primitive streak which is developed, right, which is developed on the tail end, it is on the tail end. It is developed on the tail end but no one has said that that the cells which we are producing, they cannot go anywhere. They will say we can go anywhere. So, where will they go? They start sneaking in between ectoderm and endoderm. Right? See how interesting. On the tail end, few cells they differentiate and they differentiate and then they started going in between ectoderm and endoderm and then they spread across. Right? So, thus the entire disc, right? Entire disc is now the surface right, surface it has got ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm those three layers they are formed okay this mesoderm is between intra it is called as the intra embryonic this is called as the intra embryonic because now this is between these two layers, right? So this is intra-embryonic. So where will this these cells go? Right? These cells will say that is ectoderm and endoderm. They will remain together where? They will remain together at the procordal plate. So, because that was declaring the head end, so they will say that their cells won't spread, right? Ectoderm, endoderm will, will remain together. Then developing notochord from where the spine would develop, so that will also not be affected. And the cloacal membrane, which is like a tail end, that's where they will remain together. And this is the primitive streak, right? From primitive streak from where all those mesoderms, they were traveling between two layers. Some of the cells, they will also go towards the area which will be forming connecting stock, right, connecting stock. So here, as such, it was extra embryonic mesoderm, right, over there, when we were talking about this, right, we said that this is the future connecting stock. This is where it would be connected, this baby would be connected. But this was at that point extra right it is extra it is not part of this it is not part of this these two layers but now as these cells they develop they start traveling over there also so in between they start traveling right so that's what it is called as the intra embryonic mesoderm so this was the connecting stock and this is the intra embryonic mesoderm which is there Okay, our area of interest is trilaminar disc, germ disc, trilaminar germ disc. It has got outer, middle and ear, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Yes, they are there. 
done so let's start that's what we wanted that how that disc is formed now this is gastrulation gastrulation means this is a process of formation of primitive streak we saw that Acto endoderm yes and the intraembryonic mesoderm the cells from that streak it sneaks into so we have got now this disc with us right this, this disc is ready this disc it has got the head end yes because of that prochordal plate that prochordal plate was telling yes i am the head end in that at the head end in splanchnopleuric mesenchyma splanchnopleuric right splanchnopleuric is what that visceral right that is visceral so if we if we really see that where exactly it develops it means it will be developing here it is this area right splanchnopleuric that is the area where it will start developing one specific one specific zone and that's the thing which we are interested in this is because this is these are the layers in layers on the head end and where there is when they are nearer right there there is presence of there is a formation of primary heart field this is just a primary heart field right from where the heart would start developing if you take a cross section right you will find that yes they are like simple tubes two simple tubes very basic tubes they are that's why they are called as the heart tubes so they are called as heart tubes actually this is the beginning so endoderm it secretes right this lower one was endoderm lower one was endoderm so it secretes vegf that is vascular endothelial growth factor growth factor right so under the influence of this growth factor it stimulates these tubes so those tubes they'll say that we need to rearrange ourselves so that triggers that triggers the rearrangement it means they start moving right they start moving rearrangement of these heart tubes they start moving and how do they move they start moving towards each other and they move plus there is development of this pericardial cavity right see that pericardial cavity also develop a new new cavity develops at the same time there is development of there is opening of this another hole that is dorsal aorta it means these structures they they are they just cell split and these cavities they appear we are on day 20 right so these are the heart tubes so here what happens there is something what is called as the vitelline vein this vitelline vein which is coming from yolk sac right yolk sac was just over here the secondary yolk sac right secondary yolk sac was here so from there right from both the sides that vitelline vein would go vein because it is going towards the heart so we'll call it vein so it enters into the so called tubes right and then they go out via via that another opening that is dorsal aorta so blood comes and goes right it's a very primitive flow meantime this process is continuing and what's called as the lateral folding what lateral folding is say this is watch this is straight lateral folding is when they fold like this right say say they fold like this so here is here is the plate right that is the plate and it folds like this this is how it folds right that's how it folds this is what is called as lateral folding folding upon itself when it is folding upon itself that disc right this was this was like a disc right now it becomes a cylinder it becomes a cylinder so it means if there are two structures which are present over here two structures so those two structures they will come near right so that's what is happening here these heart tubes when they were far now they have become 
they have come near to each other meantime that pericardial cavity is becoming bigger right and it comes like finally those heart tubes they come near each other and then they meet similarly those that pericardial cavity they also become bigger and they also meet so pericardial cavity that becomes a single chamber heart tubes now they are both lying next to each other and above that opening of dorsal aorta they are also near to each other the next step you must have guessed and yes it is exactly like that they fuse so this is the final output those dorsal right they were there now they are both together as one similarly pericardial cavity that is fused and it becomes a big pericardial cavity and and as the whole thing is folding like this so that that so called heart right right now so we'll just call it heart tube so that heart tube it is pushed inside and the pericardial cavity co covers it see how interesting right previously they were separate and then it goes like this so that that central structure it is pushed inside and then that cavity covers so pericardial cavity it is fused big covers and those heart tubes they also form and here is our our first primitive heart tube primitive right it has got no more functions but yes still it is primitive but it is heart it is heart inside endothelium right so it is the endocardium and outside these are the myoblasts they are the myocardium these are the muscles and this endocardium is inside okay so heart tube is formed endothelial lining that is endocardium that is also done and say this is dorsal mesocardium right this is the dorsal mesocardium meso meso is mesentery right wherever the word this comes right this is covering so it is just a covering it covers okay and aorta they have become one so in simple words aortic sac this will call it as aortic sac right it is nothing but now it is our outflow tract yeah in reality also it is going to be the same thing this will actually will become a nice complete big aorta so this is our outflow tract okay let's move further now left and right vitelline vein they were there right if you if you remember they were there right right and left vitelline membranes right those veins we said that yes a vein would go over here so there would be a structure like this agreed on both the sides so through which it was going so during folding these vitelline vein they also come near each other right they also come near each other and they fuse left and right vitelline vein they fuse and that is what leads to formation of sinus venosus so friends now we have got what we have got sinus venosus it would be inflow correct because those veins which were coming from that yolk sac right they were going so this is sinus venosus which is our inflow it goes into this primitive heart tube all right which is surrounded by the pericardial sac true and then there is dorsal aorta and which we call is as a aortic sac that is our outflow true so we can always write it like that's our heart tube sinus venosus is in and aortic sac that is out right and this is our primitive heart tube and there is pericardial cavity okay now some of the cells some of the cells right those myoblasts that is they are forming myocardium muscle of heart they differentiate themselves and they differentiate themselves in such a smart way that later on they will be all time favorite pacemaker cells what they do they rhythmically they start generating electrical discharge 
initially they are not very regular right they are okay they just fire some of the impulse because they were they are learning but once they are ready then for next 80 90 100 years they'll be doing their work sincerely till heart survives the day they stop body stops right so they will be our pacemakers okay so far we have formed even this pacemaker so this dot is pacemaker okay this much is formed but still this entire thing is just like a tube right it is just like just like this tube okay it is just like this tube now this whole tube this is a tube right this is a tube now this whole tube would bend this whole tube would bend see this is what you have to understand this whole tube would bend so previously whatever the things which were developing here when the tube bends so this heart which was developing over here it is pushed inside because this whole tube is bending and it is acquiring this shape right so automatically that heart it goes inside so that is what is called as the craniocaudal folding true that in in this tube there was a head end there was a tail end and then craniocaudal folding so structure went inside this is week 4 right just in 4 weeks we have reached to this point so this place is heart in thorax because heart was over here now it is pushed down because everyone is folding so blood starts getting pumped right some blood is going not strong right but it beats and on ultrasound if you see so you you you'll get a flutter right it is it is beating you you can see the beat so that is in fact the first beat but we need more sophisticated heart so the situation of the heart is something like this right a very strange shaped a tube tube is there let's divide this thing that what everyone will be in future so first thing we pick up always this would be our principle pick up the easiest thing first our interest is where is that left ventricle because left ventricle we are very much interested it's the largest cavity most powerful and it is supplying the whole body so here it is we see that this is what is the yeah, looks wise also it looks like so big right this is big so it is easy to understand right this is a big big chamber right so yes that's where the left ventricle is going to develop so this is what is called as the primitive ventricle obviously this is not ventricle it is primitive ventricle so if left ventricle is there what about right ventricle well right ventricle to we it is it is lying say somewhere over there right such a small space right just this much really well yeah it is like that Theke. how about atria well left and right atria they are common Achha. so here it is here it is a common area for both of them so this gives us understanding that both of them right whether atria or ventricle they have got their specific area but left ventricle is enlarge, enjoying the largest one so this is left ventricle this is primitive atria in which left and right both of them they will develop and this one this above one that is where the right ventricle is going to develop so these are the main chambers then what was this this is our inflow track and what was above that is our outflow track and names names to we already know that is what is called as the aortic arch right and this is what is called as the sinus venosus so that much is known to us now that's fine that sinus venosus right they have become fused and it has become one because of fusion of those vital vitaline art veins but it has got horns right because one comes from here one comes from here they both join but still rest of the area to it is there so they are called as the horn right so we call them sinus horn sinus horn right and left so we know this now sinus venosus we know left sinus horn we know right sinus horn and we know this primitive atrium yes this is known to us now there is primitive ventricle that is also known to us 
there is bulbous cordis that is the name for that right ventricle right right ventricle so that is bulbous cordis bulbous cordis bulb like cord like right and aortic arch that is the outflow track in between atria and ventricle atrium and ventricle we have got atrioventricular sulcus so that's it this is so very easy to understand between because this is the atrial part this is the ventricle part we have got atrioventricular sulcus things are pretty easy and this outflow right we wish to give some name because it is like a trunk it is like a bigger one and it is the artery so we call this truncus arteriosus the trunk is going out so this is truncus arteriosus and that is the aortic arch right at this stage truncus arteriosus going out from right ventricle well yes because everything is like a just like a tube this is a single single chamber okay now the real fun starts there is looping it loops right till this point it was just a bend it was just like a bend right this this is how it was like right now they go like this this is what is called as the loop this is what is called as like a loop right so in loop what happens first that tube becomes bigger walls become thick and then those sections they start moving to reach the final destination so how it happens here it is same things right over here that's what we talked about that there is primitive atrium primitive ventricle bulbous cordis that's from where the right ventricle is going to develop and on the above and below we have got the inflow and outflow in the form of sinus venosus and truncus arteriosus so this was truncus arteriosus this is aortic arch and this one is sinus venosus so far good let's focus only on our four chambers because once the chambers are set the rest of the things so they are very easy right now all of them they are into straight line this is what is called as the c shaped looping so for this think it this way that this right atrium you have you have just think like this you have got this 1 2 3 if this is the situation and then i redraw it like these are the three blocks and then we redraw it like this 3 2 1 and this 3 is on the back side if you have to do this from this is the starting position this is your start and that's the end position how will you do you'll say i'll take this 3 on to the back side right i'll take this three on the back side back side then this two that will move over here and this one will go over there think this thing in three dimensional what would happen it is the tube is like this so it will rotate right if this this is the lowest portion right this is number 3 so it would it would rotate and it will go on the back side and others will develop right so this 3 will go on the back side this 2 it will acquire respective position see something like that see primitive atria they go posteriorly primitive ventricle it takes its shape and this bulbous cord is that it comes over here again what what about this inflow so because this primary atria right primitive atria they went on to the back side so obviously they went along with this inflow this is outflow so this outflow is with bulbous cordis so yes that is already over there so this is how the heart now looking like is it is it good right getting it and the pericardium which was covering the layer which was near to the heart so now it will declare itself as ki okay i am visceral pericardium right that is epicardium and 
surrounding it will become the parietal pericardium. In between there would be fluid. So that fluid would be secreted by these cells so that now there is no friction. This heart is now looking good. It's looking somewhat like heart. We are on day 24. Right? Okay. So from outside it looks like a heart but from inside it is nothing it is just like a single chamber because what was that this was just a tube this was just a tube correct nothing is inside so just the difference is that that tube it shifted but otherwise inside to it is just one one single chamber everything from in to out it is just a single chamber true so let's do something for that So when we take a section, right, this is now a rotated heart. We have taken a section, so we find that no, there are no walls, right? It was the construction was only from the outside, inside, so it is just one big room, single chamber. That's, now this is the point. This is a single chamber, right? Think it like this. This is a single chamber. In that chamber, here is interior and here is posterior visualize this is a single chamber you are on anterior i am on posterior right so this is this back side towards me is posterior your side is anterior and then in between something develops and it forwards it it develops right it it develops like this we are talking about we are talking about this is what is called as the endocardial cushions. Endocardial cushion. What are they? Nothing. Again, the differentiated cells. Who is making them? Mesoderm. Because everything is mesoderm, right? So it develops from mesoderm, anterior and posterior. So this entire chamber was one. And in between, those differentiations started and then they, they extended, right? So they created a partition. <laughs> when this partition is created these endocardial cushions they grow towards each other right so one comes from here one comes from here and then they they fuse and they create a partition <coughs> sorry so that fused endocardial cushions so what happens it now divides the heart into two parts right there is a right part and the left part but this again Atria ventricle, though they are all one, but at least heart is now having right side and the left side. Correct? So it it formed like this and this endocardial cushions and it divided. Right? Here. Just another view. So there is dorsal that is posterior, ventral, it is anterior. So from anterior to posterior right they are now drawing now this endocardial cushions they are in between right so this as such if you go for it so this is the atria this is the ventricle right from both the sides right again there is development that development and these are the valves so they are also that mesenchymal tissues they start developing they coming come near each other and this is what is formed the tricuspid valve and over here this is the mitral valve so endocardial cushions which are into the center right they are now developing tricuspid and mitral valve once this much is developed now these things they all occur together right it is not so that one is completed then second starts then third starts no everything is happening simultaneously so Truly speaking, when these cushions, they are getting made, already the septums, they start developing, right? So, here it is. Here it is. So, these are the wall leaflets. That's our tricuspid. That's our mitral. They are getting developed. But at the same time, a septum, so I, I have given the numbers over here. Right? So, this is first step. A primary septum, it starts from the top. And it starts developing 
and it goes down 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 right it is developing 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 when it is developing right so because it is a primary septum first septum we call it septum primum but obviously it is not so that straight away in a single sling shot it will create the entire septum that septum will develop slowly gradually right so there would be a formation of an opening sort of thing over here because previously to there was no wall but now when the new wall is getting formed so that means whatever the space which is left out it is called as the a uh, opening it's called as an opening this is given a medical term term ostium primum right ostium primum so that is the first opening primum is first ostium means that's opening well not for long this thing continues and our septum primum will go all the way to these endocardial tissues and done right a septum primum is formed so this ostium primum that is that opening is obliterated it is not there now right but before this thing happens something else starts coming up and that is what that is that as our septum primum was very enthusiastic and it went on developing right all the way over here it forgot that on the back side there was no space so that was our new foramen new opening is developed so it went right and from back side there is a formation of new that is the second opening and this thing is what is called as the ostium secundum this is ostium secundum so when the septum primum was formed fully it touched the final destination the endocardial cushion but on the back side that ostium secundum developed another hole no problems right a new septum starts developing because this is new septum so we'll call this as septum secundum because it is occurring for the second right this it is a second septum so this septum secundum it overlaps the, this hole right it overlaps this hole this opening but they never fuse this is acting like one of the finest thing it is acting like a valve it is acting like a valve right so this is septum primum and that is septum secundum in between there is a there is a foramen and that foramen is called as foramen oval right this is what is called as the foramen oval and this foramen oval in the adult right both of these septum they would fuse with each other but then it is like once upon a time there was a foramen oval so that's why that thing would be called as the fossa ovalis that's what you saw yesterday into the right atrium this is our right atrium in progress so in right atrium there was fossa ovalis which was blunt right which was clean right it was obliterated because now it is just like a remnant that once upon a time in fetal stage there was foramen oval now why it should be there right why it should be there it should be there because here is the right atrium here is the left atrium in adult the pressure in left atrium is very high so this is okay right that's how heart moves but in case of in case of say fetus things are not like this right atrium is having high pressure why because left atrium to is not doing anything left atrium should send the blood to it should send the blood to left ventricle but the from where it should get the blood it should get the blood from lungs in baby in 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 that fetus these lungs are not working whatever the blood which is coming that blood is coming via mother 
right it is the mother's vessels which are giving the blood so they all are coming into right atrium so it is necessary that let's pass on this blood which is a happy blood which has got the oxygen send it to left atrium and from there it will circulate into the entire body because lungs are not there so then what to do from where to get that happy blood it is coming from the mother mother is telling i am giving you right so that oxygen it comes via all those right and it comes over here and from here it goes so it means we need to keep a path open from right atrium to left atrium but so that's it that is via that foramen that is foramen oval so interesting so it moves like that here is the septum secundum this is the septum primum septum primum this is septum secundum so when the blood tries to go this is the right side this is the left side when blood tries to go this is very thin membranous right so it will, so when the because of the pressure of the blood it will give way and the blood will happily pass through this we'll see it in fetal circulation that when the baby is born right the first cry that first cry when that blood from the lungs it pushes into into the into the left atrium so when the blood comes the pressure rises now when the pressure rises that blood would try to go back right because this is a wall but no this is membranous so immediately the position would become this is septum secundum and the septum primum it would hold it like this right it will say you know they are membrane so immediately it will stick it will not allow the blood to go on to the right side right so due to the pressure this will stick and because the pressure would always be high because lungs are always working right slowly and gradually they will diffuse and then in the yard of that foramen oval that once upon a time there was foramen oval right it will put a remembrance card like this that okay let's call this as fossa ovalis that once upon a time i was foramen oval i was transferring the blood from right to left but it is because of those lungs that opening is no more so all i am left out is with fossa ovalis so that's how it forms okay so here it is the foramen oval that was the that was the fourth point meantime over here the muscular ridge it starts developing because it is not so that those atrias so this is what we are forming it is interatrial septum correct septa between two atria so when it comes like atrial septal defect ventricular septal defect atrial septal defect is what for some reason right when we'll we'll see this thing in more detail but for some reason say this septum primum it reaches to this point only it never touches all the way to endocardial cushion it it is tired before it finishes the race so it finishes it race midway only so now this is a hole so then there is no one to cover that so when the lungs would be working when the pressure rises the blood will go from left atrium to right atrium that is left to right shunt the blood this left atria was having good blood happy blood something which is oxygen rich this is getting pushed on the right side it means this blood was to be sent to all the organs of the body and unnecessary you are say it is getting sent to right atrium because from right atrium to once again it would be circulated into the lungs so what lungs would do lungs would say are why are you increasing the pressure on me right that's what happens so here is what happens body starts feeling tired because it is getting less oxygen and lungs they are getting unnecessary tension because they are getting the overload so that's how all these abnormalities they develop but once you know this process everything will become so easy and synchronized right so this is how it happens now see 
this when we say atrial septal defect they say that there are so many classifications higher and lower and this nothing to worry about if it is over here so then it is a different type sometimes the septum secundum he gets tired and he just remains to this point right so then he finishes his journey early so then it is at a higher level this was at a lower level right lower level this was at a higher level so that's how it keeps on developing then so that's what is called as the atrial septal defect right more we'll see with the some images also so that we should be able to diagnose it also right we'll see all those conditions that's why we have kept two days for congenital heart disease but foundation is this on that day we won't be discussing much about this ostium primum ostium uh, secundum septum primum sec septum secundum nothing much right okay we were talking about these ventricles so those ventricles as they move this is the muscular ridge it develops and from the top this is the membranous ridge right finally both of them they fuse and so muscular ridge and the membranous ridge membranous part they both move they fuse so final result is we have got two atria two ventricles but still there is one small trouble there is a common outflow track right four chambers so they are nice they are ready but now what about the outflow track why we said outflow track well outflow track outflow track to so there there was what it was it was here right here this is the outflow track so everyone formed and they they created but this outflow track is just one this one right it is one so let's see how it works because there is no partition in that so current situation would be something like this this outflow track here is the right ventricle and this is the left ventricle this whole piece is one this is just one single tube big tube which is just connecting both the ventricles and to both these aorta and pulmonary area like this right it is a single thing so blood is going in both the direction but in fetus so you don't have to worry much about this part because as such pulmonary no there are no lungs right right now the lungs they are completely collapsed as if they are drowned not much of the problem occurs but then there is development of cushions this is ec cushions endocardial cushions so which cushions right superior right and left inferior right these cushions they start developing they st they develop so that they create a track right so from this truncus arteriosus there is a formation of a tube inside right there is formation of a tube and this is what is aorta whatever is left out it is this pulmonary trunk right so now it is fine that from right ventricle it goes to pulmonary trunk and then it divides and from the left ventricle it is the aorta which goes in anatomy that's the reason you were watching that this is the this is the pulmonary trunk right and it is going and aorta is just over it and it winds around right it winds around it goes like this so that is arch of aorta it goes like that right so this is this is the reason that they are so near to each other because developmentally they are like this so that is what is called as aortico pulmonary septum a septum between aorta and pulmonary trunk so they both are now separate then in the second stage as they were having valves so those valves develop right that is the second this truncus arteriosus on top there are some aortic arches right these are the aortic arches which we'll be discussing in detail tomorrow right now don't want to complicate the things so we are on day 35 what really happens is that see aortic arch 
right have you ever wondered why it is like say on the right side there is brachiocephalic trunk correct there is a brachiocephalic trunk and then from brachiocephalic trunk there goes one artery above which we call is the right common carotid artery and then it is like that subclavian that is the right subclavian would go but that's not the case on left hand side left hand side to binda straight away it sends one artery above left common carotid artery then directly there is left subclavian artery why this partiality right why right has to bear the pressure of this brachiocephalic trunk well answer of all these things you'll get tomorrow right when we'll be going in depth about that how exactly they are formed because some of the embryological things right because we could have taken this thing today but it would we would not have been able to give justice to every point so that's why deliberately i have kept this portion for tomorrow when we'll be taking it with fetal circulation so what happens when the fetus is inside how the blood is circulating the complete cycle and then as the baby is born what are the changes and how baby copes up with everything right very interesting but foundation your first day and second day right these will be the foundation okay so these are the aortic arches right aortic arch all those from truncus arteriosus now see in nutshell there are aorta and its branches they develop from aortic arches right aortic arches from there aorta and its branches develop by 4 to 6 weeks only and they emerge from aortic sac yes we remember aortic sac right that was our outflow and there are these arches six on both the sides now i'll take the most difficult one first it is number 5 because number 5 it regresses it is not making anything so easy right So that's all. So now our load is decreased. This first one and the second one, they will be leading to formation of maxillary artery and stapedial artery. Just remember these names, or even if it is like right now you don't even remember it fully, that's okay, because it's part of head and neck, etc. But yes, these are the arteries. They are from internal carotid artery. Means that common carotid when it goes up. then it leads to say internal carotid and external carotid and from internal carotid you have got maxillary and stapedial artery very important very powerful arteries because when these arteries are cut the death is unavoidable especially right when you take the pulse over here you are taking the carotid pulse right and and when you touch over here you feel that what th thrust because it is in direct continuation with the aorta common carotids right these are plus part of internal carotid that is from third arch from fourth arch it leads to formation of aortic arch and the right subclavian artery see this is the thing on the left side it is forming the arch right but on the right side it is forming that right subclavian artery so that's how things are divided fifth regresses and sixth one it is pulmonary arteries on both the sides and ductus arteriosus what is this ductus arteriosus this ductus arteriosus is also the point which is vital for fetal circulation what ductus arteriosus tells what it does it is that it is a link between the arch of aorta and the pulmonary right this pulmonary trunk would be divided right it would be divided like this so it is it would be behind it right it would be behind it so this is a link between both of them it's a small one right tomorrow i'll sh i'll show you even more about it but it means what it means that the arch of aorta whatever the blood comes right and this pulmonary artery both of them they can exchange it over here normally it is not happening right in adults but that's the reason that in fetus it is necessary so when it is necessary 
because it really wants to bypass immature lungs. Pulmonary artery would say that what would I do even if I send the blood to my both the pulmonary arteries, right? Lungs are there, but right now they are just for show. They are not doing anything. So, okay, Aorta, you take the blood with you. So, via this link, that is ductus arteriosus, pulmonary trunk, right? It would push the blood into aorta. Aorta would say, okay, you have done khichdi. You have mixed everything. Because pulmonary trunk, it would say that, yes, I am carrying the blood which is having carbon dioxide. Aorta is telling that I am already having, see, oxygenated blood. Pulmonary trunk would say, no, there is no way I can push the blood to lungs. So even mix to mix, you take that. So thus, it is the mixed blood in case of fetus which is circulated. Right? More, we will talk about tomorrow. But the idea is to bypass amateur lungs because there is no point in sending the blood to them. What about venous component? Well, this is the easiest part. There was right horn and left horn, right? Both horns, they become asymmetric. So, right becomes bigger. When right becomes bigger, they start shifting, right? Right becomes bigger, so on right side it shifts. And this is what happens. From right horn, Right from right horn, superior vena cava and inferior vena cava openings they are generated. Here it is. So that is fine. What is from the left? From the left horn, we saw in anatomy that there was one more opening, and that was the opening of coronary sinus. What was coronary sinus? Coronary sinus was that from where all the veins they were draining into it. So that opens over here. So that is opening of coronary sinus. So that's how they both are developed. Plus the oblique vein of left atrium that also opens. So near superior vena cava opening something else also happens. That is into the right atrium. Few cells they differentiate to form SA node. Right? That is what was called as the primary pacemaker. That beat which was starting but now it is not ending it over here. Now they are fully mature, right? So they are now not the primitive pacemakers, but these are the primary pacemakers who has got capacity to beat. And then into the in atrioventricular septum, so that is SA node, right? In between the septum, there is what is called as the AV node. And here is the septum. Into the septum, there are those bundle of his which is passing. So, AV node, right, sorry, this AV node, that is the secondary pacemaker. In case if SA node fails, AV node takes over. And then, from SA to AV, this is what is called as bundle of his. So, it will take it further and then from there, all the Purkinje fibers, right, they will be distributing it to, to the myocardium for their activity, right. So, that's how bundle of his, bundle of his and Purkinje fibers, they all develop. Regarding SA node, AV node, bundle of his and Purkinje fibers, we will be discussing at length when we will be discussing the ECG, right, because entire ECG is based on this. Before that, we will also be learning the physiology, one day would be for physiology, so every mechanism, right, that would be discussed. So this will make our ECG understanding much, much, much easier. So this is, this is how the heart is developed, right, done. So we welcome our new heart heartily, right. So this was for today. Do revise this thing very properly because tomorrow you are going to enjoy the fetal circulation. Plus when we will be adding still more details into that, right, so that it will make the entire topic completely impactable. Thank you so much and we meet tomorrow and we shall discuss fetal circulation. Thank you and bye-bye. See you tomorrow.